I have a little announce to make. I'm coming down to the living room. Give me ten minutes. I'm leaving now, so I'll just text you. You're a shut-in anyway. You don't have to come out of your room. You're going out. Jessica invited me to have dinner with her. Jessica's here. Unlike you, she married a rich guy and became a full-time housewife. She always go out to eat at her favorite restaurant for lunch. A woman's strength is her charm, after all. On the other hand, you're a charmless girl who's always holed up in your room at your parents' house, not even able to catch a single guy. You don't have to put it that way. How long do you think to stay jobless, having your family support you? Listen, Mom, I've been telling you a million times, but I'm not jobless. It's obvious that you're jobless. You don't even show any signs of working. You just stay home all day. Well, that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. You never listen to me. So, what is it that you wanted to talk about? I've decided to live with Jessica. Wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Are you going to move into Jessica's house? No, of course not. Jessica is coming back to our house with her husband. Did you discuss that with Jessica? Wasn't her husband's workplace far from here? With a car, he'll be fine. Even so, Jessica warned me that Dad's inheritance will disappear if I continue to live with you. And plus, it would be a burden on me having to take care of you. That's why she asked me to move in with her. Inheritance? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me. Since your father passed away, we've been living off his inheritance. I've managed to support you with this inheritance until now. But Jessica told me it was a waste to spend it on you when I could have used it on myself. And that's how Jessica asked you to live with her. There's a limit to the inheritance. Once it's gone, we'll have to live on a pension, right? But since we won't get much out of pension, I thought I'd have Jessica's husband take care of me. So you're trying to have Jessica and her husband live with you in order to have her husband support you financially? That means he'll have to support both you and Jessica. Has her husband really agreed to that? He's crazy about Jessica. You're about to meet Jessica, right? Yes. She's gonna pick me up by car, and we're gonna go out for lunch to a nice restaurant. We haven't had that kind of opportunity since your father died, and since you're jobless, you never take me out for meals. Compared to you, Jessica is a really kind daughter. If you're going to see Jessica. I think you should talk to her. I think she's hiding something. Hiding something? If you're going to live together, you'll have to talk about various matters, such as how to manage finances and house chores and so on. No need for you to worry about such things. Lately, I've been talking a lot more with Jessica than with you, who stays in her room all the time. You should worry about yourself more than us. Worry about myself. Living with Jessica means that you have to move out. What? Move out? Of course, your presence would be a nuisance. Nuisance? What's going to happen to you after I leave? My life will be easier without you. Since we can get rid of the pesky parasite, it's a blessing in disguise. You weren't listening carefully to what I was telling you, so I thought you might be misunderstanding things. But I didn't expect it to go this far. What are you talking about? You're the one who's misunderstanding things. The only reason I've been nice to you is because you're my daughter. But you're a grown woman now. You need to be independent. So get ready to move out. Let's talk about it when you get back.
There's a lot I need you to know. Your talks aren't worth listening to. After lunch, Jessica and I are going shopping. Then dinner. I'll be home late. Well, please lock up the door after I leave. I'm sure you've already heard from Mom, but I've decided to move in with her. So you'd better get ready to move out soon, sis. Jessica, did you talk things thoroughly with Mom? Of course. We carefully discussed things yesterday while having lunch. Once you're gone, we'll sell the house. With that money and Dad's inheritance, we're going to buy a new condo. Buy a new condo? You didn't discuss the most important things. I told you, we talked it over. I guess you're frustrated that you're gonna get kicked out while we start our fun life at a brand new house. It's not like that. If you continue with your plan like this, you'll be in big trouble. I won't. I know you're not happy with the fact that I'm being treated better than you, but you've been relying on mom to have an effortless life all these years. It's about time you passed that position to me. Effortless life? You're jobless, and you've been relying on mom to financially support you this whole time, haven't you? Is that what mom told you? You lied to me about having a job. I thought you were working from home because that's what you told me. But in reality, you were just a jobless chicken. I can't believe you even lied to your own sister. I'm not a shut-in, nor jobless. But you were living on Dad's inheritance, weren't you? That's what Mom said. You never put a penny in the house. Did Mom really say so? Yeah. She never puts money in the house, nor does any chores. I don't remember raising her like that. I really failed at parenting. Compared to her, you are a good girl, Jessica, is what she said. You're really useless. Even your own parents say you're a failure. I'm starting to feel sad about everything. Now, it's my turn to enjoy Dad's inheritance and live an effortless life. So get out of my way, you parasite. You're a homeless woman now that you've been kicked out. You guys are finished. You're the one finished. Unless you find a new home, you're gonna be homeless for real. You should thank me for giving you advice beforehand. Sis, how's the outside world after staying home for a long time? Did you like my present? I never thought my sister would give me a three-night spa trip. I'm surprised. A shouldn't jobless person wouldn't leave the house unless I arrange a nice trip like this, right? I was afraid you might not be so open-minded about the trip. So, to be honest, it was a bit of a gamble. But I'm glad you decided to go. Thanks to you, we were able to sell the house. Sell the house? What are you talking about? Actually, I offered you a trip to get you out of the house. You didn't show any signs of moving out of the house. So we planned to sell the house while you were out of town. At last, Mom and I can move into a new house. You sold the house already? Yes, of course. After Dad died, the house was registered in Mom's name. I made sure to check who owns the house beforehand. We just signed the contract with the real estate agent. He was seeing some stuff, but we decided to leave all the troublesome things to him. We are just waiting for the money to come in. Did you fully understand what he said? Why would I need to understand anything? It's best to leave those things to the experts. That's why we're paying the broker's commission. 
right? I think both you and Mom should listen to what they have to say. They already decided it was pointless to listen to him. I mean, why do we have to listen to a jobless person like you? You should be worrying about where you're going to live next. I was planning to move out of the house even before you guys brought this up, so I kept the important stuff elsewhere. And I've already found a place to move into. That was fast. But we're not going to let you use Dad's inheritance for your moving expenses. Understand? There is not a penny left for you to spend. The same can be said to you, too. What do you mean? I'm going to enjoy my spa trip in peace. I've been so busy lately that I haven't had a chance to relax. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Don't cry to me later saying you have no money. Hey, where are you? You moved out, didn't you? Tell me your new address. What's this all of a sudden? I was tricked. That real estate agent must have been a scam or something. Since our house was built on leased land, all you could sell was the house itself, and you didn't get any money, correct? How do you know that? It was all explained to us after Dad passed away, when we were going through the paperwork for his inheritance and all. I didn't hear that. It's just that you weren't paying attention. Plus, I re-explained everything to you after we came home, but you always ignored what I said. I didn't know it was leased land, and the real estate agent didn't even explain it clearly. I'm sure the real estate agent would have explained it. Even if you wanted to sell the building, you'd have to get the landowner's approval first. But you left that process to the real estate agent, didn't you? I told him that he should take care of all the hassle, since we're paying a broker's commission. As usual, you didn't listen to his explanation, and you just gave orders. I feel sorry for the real estate agent. What in the world is going on? I can't believe I only ended up getting a few thousand dollars. A house over 50 years old built on leased land can't be worth much money. You should be glad that you at least got some money even after paying the broker's fee and the transfer approval fee to the landowner. There is no way I can live on this kind of money. I can't even buy a new condo. That's why I'm going to your place. Jessica suggested that I have you pay me back the money I've spent on you and buy a condo with that money. The money you spent on me? I've been financially supporting you this whole time while you just stayed home without doing any work. That money, give it back ASAP. I'm the one who's been financially supporting you all this time. You're the one who should pay me back, Mom. What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. I make over 300 k a year. Stop dreaming. It's true. I work from home remotely. And what dad's inheritance are you talking about? I'm sure there's no such thing. Then what's that money in my account? That's my money, which I transferred from my account. Dad hardly had any money in his account. It was barely $3,000 or so. It was gone after I paid for his funeral. All that's left is the house. What about the money you were always withdrawing? I told you, it's all my money. I paid for the land lease out of that account. I also paid all the taxes, including property taxes on the house. You also withdrew money from that account to pay your living expenses, right? Wait a minute. That money wasn't your father's? It was actually your money? 
It's as if you are the one supporting me. That's what I'm saying. You don't work, so you have no earnings. Since Dad's gone, I decided to stay home to support you, Mom. But since you and Jessica treated me like a parasite, I shall no longer send you any money. Without your money? How am I going to live? You're going to live with Jessica, right? That's right. I can live on Jessica's husband's salary. I won't have any problems even without you. But Jessica is about to divorce her husband. Divorce? He found out about Jessica's affair and is demanding alimony. She never mentioned such things. I believe Jessica didn't tell you anything. She won't tell or listen to anything that's inconvenient for her. But how do you know all this? That's because Jessica asked me to lend her money, saying her husband was about to leave her. I asked her why it came to this, and she told me how he found out about her affair and was demanding alimony. I refused, so she decided to kick me out and tried to live off the money by selling the house. That's unbelievable! So her husband won't live with us, and there's no one to support me? So, both you and Jessica were trying to depend on each other for financial support. Where are you right now? I'm not going to tell you. I'm a parasite, so you shouldn't get involved with me. I didn't know about you! 300k a year, right? That's amazing! That's more than what your father used to make. You make that much by doing a little bit of work from home, right? My work is not little. It's a big amount of work. I've been sacrificing a lot for my work. But since this business has become more stable, I've been able to control things a bit better now. So it's true when you said you were busy? Then you're the one who needs me. Why would I need you? You need someone to do the housework. Mom, don't tell me you think you are covering the housework too, not just the money. I did all the housework for you. What are you talking about? I bought all the electric devices, like the cleaning robot, auto cooking machine, and also the washing drying combo machine. You hardly did anything. Even for the cooking part, we used Uber Eats a lot. That's not true. The house was always clean. I hired a housekeeper once a week when you weren't home. Oh, really? Hey, are you joking now? Or is it better for you to go see a doctor? Whatever it is, I don't want anything to do with you or Jessica anymore. You two shall try to manage to live on your own from now on. Don't say that! I was trying to repay you for giving birth to me and raising me. I've invested a lot of money in you to take care of my only parent. But you said you failed at raising me. Did you think I wouldn't be shocked to be told that? I'm so sorry. I was wrong. You've grown up to be a fine daughter. I think I've done enough to repay you. And I left all the old model electronics at home. Consider it as a final gift from me. Let's live as strangers from now on. Wait a minute, Katie. I'm actually more fond of you than Jessica. We're mother and daughter, so let's live together. You're single and I'm single too. I think it's more convenient for us to live together. Oh yeah, and this phone you're using right now? I've been paying for it from the account I was putting money into. So, if you don't start earning money, the phone service will stop too. No way! Please, think of it as helping your mother. Just because we're family, that doesn't mean I can easily forgive you. There are limits. From now on, I'll choose you over Jessica. 
Please, live with me again. Please. Katie. I choose to be alone. When my mother and sister realized that they couldn't rely on each other, they started cursing each other. They are also arguing over which one of them should bear the living expenses. My sister is officially divorced, and she is also being charged alimony. The two of them can't live on their own, so they live in a cheap apartment together, living on our mother's pension and their part-time job incomes. They continue to struggle to make ends meet, paying my sister's alimony in installments.